Hello, everybody, uh, and greetings from Finland. Uh, my name is Taru Antikainen, and I'm a farmer producing uh, omega-3 pork uh, with no antibiotics ever for HK Scan Finland. Uh, we own this farm called Krogan Tila Oy uh, with my husband and his two brothers. Uh, as a, I'm a farmer, but I'm also uh, a chairman of the Central Union of Agricultural Producers and Forest Owners uh, of Pig Sector and Network, and also a vice president of EPP International. And this is the reason why I was asked to talk to you today. And But before I start with my presentation about antibiotic resistance and, and no antibiotics ever production, I would like to show you a couple of videos from our farm and, uh, and tell you something about us. But let's start with the first video. Here we go. Unfortunately, we were not able to get the sound to these videos as, as farms, but it's texted so that you can see what's going on. We have six people working in here, and we have all kinds of pigs in four buildings. OK, and then I have another video. Oh. Why is it not changing it? Okay, now, okay, sorry about that. Another video. This is me talking about what we are doing and producing, what the pigs are fed with, and all about our other production as well, which I will talk to you next a little bit in more detail than in these buildings. But you can see. Uh, the farm and those, some of the piglets in these pictures. Okay. So, we are a family farm owned by three brothers and me. Uh, we have been here since 2001, but the whole farm has been in this family since 1912. Our main production line is piglet farming and uh, but we also have fatness. Uh, we have 340 sows at the moment, and we are weaning 33.5 uh, piglets per sow per year. Uh, we cannot um, grow all of our piglets ourselves, but we are selling one third of our production to another farmer who's also doing this omega-3 pork for HK scan. Um, the, for those who are interested in pig production in general, our numbers are pretty good, although we have specialized production, or perhaps even that is the reason for that. Uh, this is what you see are the results from this year. And um, I would say that in general, they are pretty good. Uh, we have slaughter big spaces for 1,000. 500 piglets, and uh, they grow really quickly in, in about 5.2 months. So their growth rate is over one kilo per day. And our meat percentage is 59.7, which I can say is for this omega-3 piglet is a really good one. Unlike other farms, we use four-stage raising. They are one month under a sow. Then they are about eight weeks in a nursery. And then we have sort of a early finishing production stage where they are up till 70 kilos. And after that, they go to finishing. And they are slaughtered at a light weight of 120 kilos. That's the Finnish way of doing it. And then I will show you a couple of more videos. Uh, all these videos are made like the season season thing. Uh, so this is the winter vid video. The Finnish has special sort of conditions because the winter kills bacteria. 
And the reason why I want to present these videos in this order is that it sort of leads you to my topic. And you can see that uh, all these videos that our piglets, they have their whole tails. The tails are not clipped at all. And that's also a Finnish way, which is quite unusual in, in Europe. Okay, so that was all about our farm. The next thing I want to talk to you about how it is possible that we can produce uh, piglets without antibiotics ever. As you can see, this is our reality today, but um, how we have got, got to get here and um, is something I'm going to talk to you next about. The Finland way of doing this is based on this One Health concept. I don't know how many of you know about it, but um, it's sort of a thing which takes into consideration uh, also animal health, but human health, and then the environment. And we have been working on the basis of this concept since the end of the uh, 1970s. And this is the reason why we are here today, because we have done this work for a really, really long time. Um, I think we all agree that antimicrobial resistance is a really a global, huge uh, cross-border health threat. And we have to do something really quickly unless we want to sort of get into a big trouble when our antibiotics do not work anymore when you are dealing with diseases. Um, the fight against antibiotic resistance, uh, why do we need to do it? Um, it's because of our health, but also the animal health. And um, and what are the causes which is are sort of contributing uh, to this? Uh, the first thing is that human beings are not using the whole in antibiotic cause, which is sort of uh, given to them by their doctors to kill the disease they are using. The other thing is the overuse of antibiotics in livestock and fish farming. And this is something where we have paid really close attention here in Finland. No antibiotics is given to any animals here in sort of a, in food, feed or um, in water. If animal is sick, it's uh, medicated individually. And that's why our, our, the figures are in, in Finland are really low. And another thing is... Uh, poor infection control in healthcare settings, both in animal and in, in, in human conditions. And that is something I'm going to talk to you about, how things are done here in the Finnish, but not just in pig sector, but also in poultry and cattle. And um, hygiene and sanitation are really sort of key elements in, in health management. Uh, the biggest problem, I think, is that humans and animals use the same antibiotics uh, which treat, to treat their illnesses. And uh, some of the bacteria are also common to the, both of us. So we have to be really careful when we are going to use the antibiotics and why we're going to use it. Because... Uh, it's been seen that the resistance factors can be transmitted from one bacterial species to another. Thus, the impact of antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance does not end with the individual that is given the antibiotics or that has been found 
with resistant bacteria. Nowadays, I would say that the, one of the biggest problems, it, it's not just uh, the pigs, poultry or cattle, but the pets. Uh, people have enormous amounts of cats and dogs and all kinds of other house animals, and they are being treated quite extensively with antibiotics. Only during the last few years uh, the problem has been noticed and something has been done about it. Uh, thank God in Finland this trend has been going down for years, but there's still a lot of work to be done. We here in Finland haven't ha had used uh, antibiotics for poultry for a really, really long time and the amount which we are using it for pigs is already really low. Uh, but in, together with Sweden, Norway, Iceland, uh, Finland is one of the countries using antibiotics the least in the world. Here, as in Sweden and Norway, the penicillin is uh, used above all else for the animals. We don't need to use uh, fluoroquinones or, or other sort of third generation antibiotics and all of our medication is given to the animals as injections. I know that in quite a huge amount of world it's more usual to give it uh, in a feed or in a drinking water but we don't do that at all. Um, in Finland we have quite a few different systems used to monitor the antimicrobial resistance situation and we do a lot of cooperation with uh, across Europe. Uh, Finland participates in the ERS net which is European Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Network and an ESAC net as well. And then the Finnish Medicines Agency, FIMIA, has monitored the sales volumes of animal antibiotics in Finland since 1995, so that we have a really clear picture what is used uh, and uh, how much is used and uh, what is sort of given to people, what is given to animals. And nowadays we are developing a new system so that we could really separate what is given to each specific animal group so that things are getting forward. forward. Here's a chart where you can see the amount of uh, uh, bacteria which still takes the sort of first stage penicillin antibiotic. And as you can see, Norway and Finland are there, Sweden and Iceland are all in the, they have stopped that. We don't have that kind of bacteria which is not killed with the sort of normal antibiotics. But I'm afraid that uh, there's increasing number of uh, the multi-resistant bacteria found in animals all over the world. So I think other countries have to follow our lead and do quickly something in, just in order to uh, give space for these antibiotics in humans so that we can keep us alive. Uh, here is another picture about these antimicrobials but this is a sort of a, a specific for pigs. Uh, it's a little bit late since it's uh, from 2015, so it's five years old, but unfortunately there aren't that many new, new things. And this is uh, an EU map where you can see which amount of, of bacteria is sort of still taking the antibiotics well. Okay. So what are the points which we need in order to get into these kinds of results? Uh, it all starts from the breeding of the animals. Uh, 
when we get sort of healthy animals with strong legs and uh, strong stomach bacteria and stuff like that, uh, it helps. It, it maintains the animal health, but also other welfare factors need to be taken into consideration. The feed must be really pure and the water as well. So they have to be monitored. We take uh, uh, samples of our feed a couple of times a year and the water needs to be tested every now and then so that we can see that there's no bacteria in the water. Um, I don't know if you know, but the, the, in, in all these uh, experiment, uh, studies which have been made about the soil and the water, the thinnest soil is the cleanest in the world. And also we have a lot of groundwater, which we also can give to our animals in order to provide them the best water there is. They, they are given the same water as we people are, are, are sort of drinking. Um, another thing is that we have really good housing conditions. Um, uh, they, this is sort of well-studied fact that they need this sort of solid area for sleeping and then it's also um, possible us to give them um, material to play with and do enrichment material and and that and then there is a really good vaccination program first finish way is uh, that we have this uh, uh, data paste called Sikava uh, which means um, that uh, it's sort of a health classification register for pig farms in Finland. It was founded in 2003 by slaughterhouse companies uh, in order to provide a health classification system. And it is run by different slaughter companies uh, which have created this kind of uh, separate organ uh, taking care of it. It's, it's called ETT, which is Animal Health of Finland. Um, this system classifies pig farms into three different categories, um, but also the same kind of system is for poultry and cattle. And why this whole system was was uh, put into get together is that we want to uh, assure that our consumers um, can be really sort of uh, relaxed about the food safety so that it, the whole system is traceable and that we can sort of show them that the welfare of the animals is in, in a really good level. If we look at the timeline um, all over the world in 19 at the beginning of the 20th century, the focus was on a single animal. But when the time goes, goes on, then, then the herds and flocks became bigger ones. Then their focus was on a herd, on a flock. But now, when um, the food production chain is sort of, in Finland at least, it's integral, so that everything is done from farm to fork. So the slaughterhouses sort of, uh, they dictate us what to do and uh, sort of take our products and uh, so that um, we can actually give, well, produce things so that it's all traceable from farm to the plate of uh, the, the consumer. This is the reason why we are audited all kinds of systems. We have taken into advantage of the new tech technology and we have been able to improve our productivity a lot. And all of this is stand in standards and it's certified uh, by international. Uh, so it's Kiva certified ISO 9001 certifi certified system. This is a voluntary system, sort of. But um, because the slaughterhouses are running it, about 96% of uh, Finnish pig producers are joined into this system. Otherwise, they are not uh, be able to sell uh, their piglets or slaughter pigs uh, into, into these companies. Um, they, 
if they are slaughtering themselves, they don't have to join it, but it gives a lot of benefits. So even those kinds of people who are, are running their own little slaughterhouses are joined into this. So how do sort of pro, pro, the, all the money is coming from the industry and the producers so that uh, uh, government uh, authorities, although they are working in cooperation, uh, are not buying for this. And uh, it's a win-win situation for everybody because uh, we can um, do a lot of things to improve our production and then uh, all the things which is recorded can be used to show the authorities what is done, how it's done, and the veterinarians are really closely linked to this as well. The Sikava uh, requires some things from the producers. First of all, we have to make a contract with our veterinarian. Uh, in Finland, the veterinarian must visit uh, the farm at least three or four times a year, but in our case, it's eight to ten times. And uh, every flock has to be checked by the veterinarian or it's not allowed to be sold uh, to the slaughterhouse. And uh, all kinds of information has been put into that Sikava before and the veterinarian is sort of checking it. And the other thing is that with the, the Sikava uh, and a lot of cooperation with our slaughterhouses and authorities, we have been able to eradicate eradicate uh, quite a lot of diseases from Finland. We do not have salmonella, endonotic pneumonia, mange, antropotic rhinitis, or swine dysentery. We don't have a PRS, and we still do not have ASF, which is our biggest fear, because uh, ASF has been found quite close to our Russian border. Um, but uh, a lot of work is required in order that we have got here. It, for example, we still have some cases of salmonella, but that means that all of those pigs which have got salmonella, the, all of the animals from that farm are culled and sent to the energy. It's not eaten that meat at all. And uh, a lot of work is done in cooperation with uh, a lot of people so that this farm is disinfected and uh, and nearly new built in a couple of times so so that uh, this is a big thing here in Finland and we have to pay quite a huge amounts of insurance uh, for the insurance companies so that we can keep this situation what is also done in Sikava is this in cooperation with other veterinarians is the vaccination protocol. We have to dewarm all our animals and we have to use painkillers in castration. If you're not using painkillers, then you have to find another way to castrate your piglets. I mean, you can use a vaccination or, or not, not. Well, the slaughterhouses are not accepting um, pigs without castration, so some other methods need to be done. Then we have these biosecurity instructions which has to be followed. And also um, the semen and animals are not allowed uh, to be brought yourself. So two of our biggest uh, slaughterhouses, they own their own company which produces semen and then uh, brings in the boars uh, which the semen is taken and it's sort of distributed to the farmers all over Finland. And also the feed, you can't just purchase feed wherever you want, you have to, ha the, the company has to be accept it on this positive list which ETG maintains and keeps so that it fulfills all these criteria to produce really good feed for our animals. All the medications, vaccinations, dewormings and everything, they are recorded in Sikava uh, at every farm. So we have this huge uh, database which is filled with information from 
all the participants. The veterinarian, when he, he or she visits, um, they put all their observations into this database. The farmers put all these medicine use and vaccination use and whatever in there. And if they, the farmer or the veterinarian send something to the laboratories, uh, all the analyses are fed in into this database as well. We also have to make a health management plan every year with the veterinarian and all the things which have been put in there or the whole document is it can be found in that database as well. And all the meat inspection data coming from the slaughterhouses, uh, that's sort of put in there. And this is sort of all together makes an official swine register where the authorities can check the yearly amount of pigs and uh, the numbers of medications, vaccinations, or whatever is done. Um, so uh, this SICAWA personnel, they make these reports so that they can be given to all the Finnish authorities or the minister people or whatever, every, every authority who needs this data. Our farm, we have do, done this antibiotic-free production since 2017, and uh, it was sort of asked from our slaughterhouse HK scan, so if we could sort of be piloting in Finland to do this. And we have been producing this omega-3 pork without antibiotics ever since. We have been in this omega-3 pork since 2011, when, which is the time it's, it's been produced here in Finland. But um, we wanted to lift the level because we saw that it was possible to do it antibiotic-free. So why it's done is that HK Scan wants to have this really luxury quality meat. So we have been exporting this uh, to China for a couple of days. We have a company there who's uh, working together and uh, sort of backing it from the frozen meat which is taken there. But uh, in our farm, this means that we don't add antibiotics, neither to the feed or the water. We treat the individual animals who have gotten sick, uh, and they are marked with a yellow tag in their ear so that we can separate them when they go to the slaughterhouse so that they are never ever sell, sold as antibiotic-free pigs. Um, the rate where we have to medicate, it's between 7 and 8 percent, which is pretty low. So we are not losing that much money when we have to medicate them. And um, the we start medicating them really easily, so if there's any problems, we do medicate them. But if we don't see any improvement in three days, it means that that animal has to be culled, because we don't want them to suffer if it's sort of possible. The dead animals which we get, we fro freeze them, and then there comes this truck which takes them to a special plant with, where there is are used as energy production to heat the other people's houses. Our piglets, they are vaccinated against circo virus and they are dewarmed. And just a couple of months ago, we started a trial uh, to use a Lawsonia vaccination, but we haven't seen any sort of benefits from that, so it might be that we will stop that because we don't seem to have the problem. But we just wanted to do a test if we could even improve even more our production with that. Uh, the sows, they have been have sort of a normal vaccination scheme which is used all around the world. I don't know if this has helped you in any way to <laughs> to do it, because um, the thing is that we have been working on it for 40 years. So, and the general level of health of pigs in Finland is in such a high 
high level that um, uh, I don't know it's it's quite difficult to get into but um, a new thing in, in this Sikava is that uh, we are using a new um, this sort of biosecurity app it's called biocheck and uh, there are quite a few steps uh, which have been evaluated so it's the purchase of the animals and semen and then you get points from that how well it's done in your farm and whatever then there's this transport of animals uh, removal of manure and dead animals that's one category and uh, so that how much your animals are moved from one farm to another and how hygienic are the circumstances in that and uh, how do you deal with the dead animals and what's done with them and stuff like that. A third category is feed, water and equipment supply. So how the feed is provided to your farm and how, where you get your water, what kind of water, where do you buy your equipment, how do you store them before use, do you do something with that before and then uh, there's this personnel and visitors. How do you, your personnel go into the house, what they do there, and how do you allow your visitors, what they are required to be? And then there is uh, vermin and bird control. Is it p possible for you to lock down the, the things that vermin and birds are not allowed, and, well, will not be able to enter your farm? And then there is this environment and region. And this is sort of external biosecurity. So you get one point from that. And then there is internal uh, biosecurity, which is disease management, uh, how, how the farrowings and suckling period are handled, and then how your nursery unit is handled, and, for, and then fattening unit, how it's handled. Then um, we check the messes between compartments and the use of equipment, what, what's done with that. And uh, finally, there's cleaning and disinfection. And again, all of these are messed separately. And then all together, you get a score of how well have you done in scope, we can say Finland or in the whole world, because this is the concept which is used all around the world, not just in Finland. And this is a really good sort of a tool to improve what you've been doing in your farm. I really do hope that this has been sort of a illuminating thing and given you ideas how antibiotic free production is possible and how you could get go through towards that. But I'm not saying that it is easy. And at the end I have want to show you a video which is filmed in our farm uh, where the two Michelin star chef Kam Fung Chu, or I don't know how his name is actually supposed to be said, but uh, he's in, in Hong Kong, he's from Hong Kong and he visited our farm a couple of years ago and we made a sort of advertisement f film with him. So with, let's see. I来到芬兰,那个地方,那个森林和大自然 Gasan 
Thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of my performance, and I hope that the interpreter is able to sort of get get my idea and convey my message to all of you. I wish you all a really nice autumn and all the best with your struggle with ASF in China. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>